Welcome to the R video tutorial on working with probability distributions. All right, so in this tutorial, you're going to learn how to deal with probability distributions and specifically the distribution functions and their inverse distribution function. Okay, so one of the most popular distributions is the normal distribution, and that's the one we're going to focus on at first. So if I'm interested in the distribution function of a normal distribution, I need to give it three arguments. And some of these may be in vectors, but the first argument in this distribution function, which the function is actually P norm. For an inverse distribution function, you'll see later that it's Q norm. I need to give it the value that I'm interested in. Here it's three. And I need to give it a mean, which is zero, and a standard deviation, which is one. If you can't remember this, go look it up in the help. Okay, here's another one, P norm. 17 is the value I'm interested in. The mean of the distribution is 15. The standard deviation is 3. Now, if I run these, what it's going to do is it's going to give me a probability, and it's specifically probability that it's the normal distribution that's specified with its mean and standard deviation, and it's the area under the curve that's to the left, or the probability of being less than the number specified. All right, so I'm going to submit this to the console. And here on the first one, I'm interested in what is the probability that a random variable with a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one, which has a normal distribution, will be less than three. And here you see the probability is 0.998. All right. The second argument is what's the probability that a normal random variable with mean 15 and standard deviation of three will have a value less than 17? This is not the probability that it's equal to 17. It's a probability of less than. And I'll show you that here in just a second in a picture. All right, the next thing you might want to do is go the opposite way. What if I have a probability and I know the distribution? What value corresponds to that? What value is such that, that there is the probability specified of being less than that? All right, so the Q norm function does that. It's the inverse distribution function. All right, so that's why I have it highlighted here. So the first argument is what is the probability or what's the area under the curve that you want to have to the left? Okay, in this case, it's 0.75. Then the second argument is the mean, and the third argument is the standard deviation. This next one here, the probability that I'm interested in is 0.85, the mean is 15, and the standard deviation is 3. And if I run this, this will tell me the values that correspond to that in the sense that the probability of being less than the value that it spits out will be the specified probability. Okay, for the first one, notice that the probability is 0.75. For a standard normal, which has a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one, you see that if you're less than 0.67 on a standard normal distribution, then that probability of being less than that is 0.75. Now, for a distribution with a different mean of 15 and a standard deviation of 3, then the probability of being less than 18.1093 is 0.85. And we specified the 0.85, and this is telling us what value works backwards from that. All right, so I'm going to draw a picture of this. And you don't really need to pay attention to the code, because what I want to do is just draw the picture so you can see what's going on with this. Okay, so here's what I have. I have a normal distribution plot, and it happens to be the standard normal. But the area that it's giving, or the probability it's giving, is the area to the left. All of the functions in R give the area to the left. You have to know how to transform them back around to get area to the right or area in between. But that will be up to you. And you'll notice this is a whole lot easier than looking things up on the table. So. Other distributions you might be interested in that are common might be the t-distribution. And again, the prefix for the t-distribution will be pt if I'm interested in the probability distribution function, qt if I'm interested in the inverse distribution function. And if I do this, this will give me similar probabilities that I got above in the sense that they're areas to the left. They're always areas to the left. They're areas le or probabilities of being less than that. And I'm expecting you to know something about statistics so you understand what degrees of freedom are when it comes to the t-distribution. 
another popular distribution that you might be interested in is the F distribution. It's quite useful in ANOVA and lots of different types of tests. Uh, and of course, in this one, I'm expecting you to know what the degrees of freedom are. The first one will be the numerator degrees of freedom, and the second one will be the denominator degrees of freedom. But you can calculate this for the F distribution as well, and this will give you the corresponding area or the value that has the area specified. And again, these are always areas to the left. Another common distribution that you might be interested in is the chi-square distribution. And again, you can use the P in front of the chi-square or the Q in front of the chi-square to get either the distribution function or the inverse distribution function. And you need to know which one you're looking for. And I'm not going to go over that here because you would have learned it in your statistics class. But it's easy to calculate in R because you simply use the functions that are already built in. All right, so it gave me the probability and the value from the inverse distribution function. Now you need to know what an inverse distribution function is and a probability distribution function in order to understand what we're talking about here. But if you understand that, then you'll notice that this can be a whole lot easier than looking at a value up on a table. And not only that, notice that the decimal places go out a lot farther than on any table. So you get much more accurate probabilities and values from these functions. All right, so this has been the R video tutorial on working with probability distributions. If you have any questions, just ask or watch the next video.